Thank you for joining us for today's Worth Electronic and Texas Instruments online power seminar, Getting Started with Power Over Ethernet. Today's presenters are Brett Coulteau, Product Marketing Engineer with Texas Instruments, and Aperva Ingle, Product Definition Engineer with Worth Electronic. And now to begin today's presentation is Brett Coulteau. So thank you everybody for attending um, our, our power seminar today. I want to thank Worth Electronic for, for partnering with us um, and for putting this together. Uh, my name is Brett Coulteau. I'm a product marketing engineer at Texas Instruments. And today I'll be educating you guys on uh, power over ethernet as a technology. So on a high level um, today, what I plan on talking about um, is you know, power over ethernet. I wanna introduce you know, what, what is PoE um, and when does it make sense to, to use PoE as a technology, um, as well as you know, touching on kind of the value prop and, and, and why most folks use PoE, um, as well as touching on you know, our traditional you know, PoE applications, as well as some emerging applications that uh, we're starting to see adopt PoE um, at an accelerating rate. In addition, um, I want to highlight some reference designs uh, that we recently put together um, that I think um, can, can definitely help folks who are new to PoE to you know, get, get, get started with PoE as a technology and to uh, start learning more about how PoE can be used um, for them and their applications. So let's, let's jump into it. So first off, you know, what is PoE, right? Um, so on a high level, PoE is providing a DC power, uh, 44 to, to 57 volts, although most customers do use uh, 48 volts typically, um, over the same Cat5e cable that carries Ethernet data. So over here you can see um, we have a, you know, an RJ45 receptacle, a Cat5e cable that you know, plugs into the receptacle, and then inside of the cable, if you were to cut it, you'd see four twisted pairs of wire um, that are used to send power and data over that same over the same cable. In terms of some um, you know, high level terminology, um, you'll hear me reference PSE and PD uh, several times throughout this presentation, so I think it's important to, to define them. Um, on, the, on the sourcing side um, of, of the cable are typically you know, ethernet switches that provide power um, over ethernet. Um, and inside of these end equipment um, are our PSE or power sourcing equipment controllers. So at PI, you know, we design PSE ICs um, that basically uh, negotiate with the load. Um, there's, there's a handshake that happens um, in order to determine how much power needs to be sent to the load. Um, uh, and then, you know, that power um, is allocated and sent across the cable. So you'll hear me refer to the sourcing side as the PSE side of the cable. On the load side is what we refer to as the PD or the power device side of the cable. And again, at TI, you know, we design and manufacture power device controllers. Um, that you know, negotiate with the PSC how much power needs to be sent. And traditional uh, power device and equipment um, are IP phones, <clears throat> wireless access points, and security cameras. And these are the traditional kind of PoE uh, bread and butter and equipment here. You're probably wondering how much power can you send uh, through PoE? And PoE has evolved over time uh, through various different um, standards. So in 2003, the IEEE committee got together and defined uh, what we call the 802.3 AF standard. Um, and this enabled the PSE to send you know, up to 15.4 watts and for the PD to receive up to 13 watts um, after 100 meters of Cat5e cable. So there is some you know, power loss um, in the cable, um, but you, know, you are sending it for, for 100 meters. Um, so that, that was the AF standard that came out in 2003. In 2009, uh, the IEEE uh, 802.3 AT standard um, was introduced, which enabled us to send up to 30 watts from the PSE and to receive 25.5 watts on, on the PD. And then just last year in 2019, the BT standard came out, which tripled the amount of power <clears throat> that we can send. Um, so PSE can now send 90 watts of power um, and a PD can receive up to 71 watts of power. Again, after 100 meters of cat 5 v cable. Um, so the, you know, the need for more power has evolved over time and uh, the IEEE standard um, or the IEEE committee has responded by, uh, you know, redefining uh, the 802.3 standard to enable higher power to be sent. So one question that I get often is, you know, why, why do I, why would I want to use PoE and when does it make sense to really use PoE? 
Um, and one of the main reasons um, that, that I see folks use PoE um, is really when they want to send power and data um, you know, over the same cable up to 100 meters um, away from, from like an AC main outlet or a source, right? And this also comes into kind of convenience of, of installation and use. So if you imagine having a security camera, you know, you want to install this in the corner of a room, um, you know, chances are you're not going to have a, you know, an AC mains or a, an AC outlet, you know, in the corner of, of that room. Um, so this is where POE would come into play, um, you know, where you can um, conveniently install that camera wherever you'd, you'd like to install it, you know, up to 100 meters away from a source. Um, and one of the main benefits of this as well is that there's no electricians required for the install. So anybody um, can go ahead and, and install um, those end equipment. Another reason um, why folks choose PoE is because of, you know, it's an IEEE 802.3 uh, standards based. In addition to it being a standards based um, technology, um, at TI, you know, we're really committed to product longevity, um, you know, for our, our customers. And we have strategies and policies in place really to uphold that commitment. Um, and so um, from, a, from a designer perspective, um, you know, uh, part obsolescence, obsolescence is very uncommon from, from TI and within the POE world. Um, so that's another kind of main reason why, why folks choose POE. In addition, um, you can send power up to 71 watts at the load, so it's really scalable to meet, you know, various power, uh, power, power demands of, of your system. Um, in addition, uh, I see a lot of folks starting to use PUE more and more for, for power redundancy. So, um, and, you know, security cameras or access points, I'll see folks use, um, you know, multiple PUE inputs. Um, you know, for, for a security camera, you never want the power to go down. You always want to be, you know, surveying, um, to be surveying. Um, and so it's important to have multiple power supplies in case one, one PoE port were to go down, you could have another PoE port as backup. And last but not least, a lot of folks choose PoE. Um, and one of the main you know, value props of PoE is that it's standards based and so you can really have confidence of interoperability between, between certified products. So um, the Ethernet Alliance has you know, put together a certification program um, and at TI, we have several of our um, reference designs that we um, have put through this, this test suite to basically get um, EA certified logos on our end equipment and uh, are on our uh, evaluation modules or reference designs. And so what this uh, translates to from a customer perspective is, um, you know, if, if you are able to get an EA certified logo on your end equipment, um, you know, from a marketing perspective, um, this, this, you know, highlights to, um, you know, the industry that, that your end equipment is going to be interoperable with, with other end equipment that, that, you know, meet this, this IEEE standard compliance. Um, so from a, from an installer perspective, it's very easy to go in and to install end equipment um, that have these, these logos on them. So if you can imagine, um, just the, the logo on the left, this would be a logo that would go on an Ethernet switch. Um, this says I'm a class four PSE. The arrows going out, which means I'm a source of power, and this 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 four here represents the power level of the PSC. So class four power level represents 30 watts. So this says I can send 30 watts per port. This logo over here says I'm a class one PD. I want to receive power. Um, as long as this power level is is less than over here, you can go ahead and plug in these end equipment, and they're guaranteed to interoperate, um, which is one of one of the beautiful things of of having the EA certified logo. So I wanted to highlight some of the you know, primary applications that use PoE today, and then highlight some of the kind of emerging applications that I'm starting to see about PoE. So as I touched on earlier, um, some of the primary applications that use PoE are you know, enterprise switches, as well as PoE pass-through and injectors. Um, so this pass-through and injector, these are really you know, um, adding power to existing solutions that are sending data over a Cat5e cable today. Um, so these are used to, you know, inject uh, power over over that same cable. On the load side, you know, traditionally it's IP phones, cameras, access points, and, and small cells. Um, however, um, I'm starting to see PoE being adopted by, you know, more and more end equipment every day. Um, some examples you can see here: um, electronic smart locks, occupancy detection, video doorbells, uh, HMI panels. I'm also starting to see PoE adopted in, you know, medical and nurse call stations. Um, baby warmers, just various different, you know, applications. So um, 
just wanted to highlight that, you know, if, if you are, are using a Cat5 e cable for data today, um, you know, why not add, um, you know, why not use that same cable for, for power and data? Uh, another question I get a lot is, you know, why, why TI PoE, right? Um, and this is definitely a very fair question. Um, you know, one of the reasons why I find that a lot of customers stick with TI or decide to come to TI, you know, when, when they're, you know, new to PoE um, is just because we are, you know, we have a, a, a complete portfolio end to end on the PSD and PD side of IEEE 802.3 compliance solutions. Um, and we really pride ourselves on the number of reference designs that we have available for our customers to kind of help them to get started and to accelerate their design. Um, so when, when, you know, when you come to TI.com, you can take a look at, you know, our hundreds of reference designs um, that can, you know, help you to go ahead and get started. We have EA certified reference designs that can be copied and pasted uh, to put you in a good standing to, you know, get the logo on your end equipment. Um, and we really pride ourselves on, you know, having, you know, standards-based solutions that are interoperable. Um, so those are some of the main reasons um, why customers come to TI to go ahead and get started with their, with their PoE designs. All right, so let's highlight some of our, our reference designs to go ahead and get you guys started with, you know, learning about PoE um, as a technology and kind of plugging and playing. Um, so this is um, a reference design that we just put together. This is basically an Ethernet switch. <laughs> So we, we have a 24 port um, PSD reference design. Um, so this design uses our TPS238A1, which is our, um, our, our BT PSD. Um, it can send up to you know, 90 watts per port for BT compliant applications and up to 120 watts per port for, for non-standard um, applications. Um, we partnered with our MSP430 team at TI and we put together kind of what we're referring to as our, our firm PSD uh, ecosystem, which is basically um, a really easy to use, you know, GUI along with our, our hardware here um, that enables customers to basically reduce um, their, their software resources by enabling port power management methodology um, through the use of our GUI. So taking a step back, you know, why would somebody want to use port power management in an Ethernet switch system? Um, you know, if you imagine this, this switch here, we have 24 ports, um, we could send 90 watts per port. I think that's, you know, a couple kilowatts of power, right? Um, and in reality, most customers are not gonna use a two kilowatt power supply, you know, in their system. They may use a 500 watt power supply or, or a one kilowatt power supply, and they'll use some sort of smart, um, some sort of um, port power management in order to allocate power appropriately to different ports based upon the port priority. Um, and what they're trying to do in the ecosystem. And so that's what we've gone ahead and, and created is basically an easy to use GUI that enables you to kind of reduce that power supply so that you can, um, you know, implement port power management um, in your PSD system. So um, for, for folks who are interested in designing, you know, Ethernet switches, uh, we've basically taken a lot of the heavy lifting out from a hardware and a software perspective. Um, in addition, we also have this same reference design for the TPS23882. Um, this is just our, our lower power level IEEE 802.3 AT uh, PSE um, that can send up to 30 watts per port um, uh, for, for type 3 compliant applications and up to 60 watts per port for, for non-standard applications. Uh, the only difference here is going to be the daughter card. Um, so it's a different daughter card that you order um, to evaluate um, the lower power level 24 port design. So I kind of touched on like firm PSC and, and what this means to you. So on a high level, um, you know, once you get this evaluation circuitry in your hand, you'll go ahead and download our, our you know, firm PSC GUI. Um, and just by using our drop down menus and, you know, it's really easy to use. Um, you, you basically input into the GUI and output is going to come, you know, a production ready firmware code image um, that you can then flash to your system and use in a production level environment for, for port power management. So again, um, just, you know, doing as much as we can to take off the heavy lifting, um, uh, specifically on the, on the software side of things. So switching it up on, in terms of the load side of the cable, um, one of the reference designs that I wanted to highlight, um, is our TIDA010083. Um, this is our, uh, really small solution size type one, um, PD, 
uh, 13 watt five volt um, reference design. It's, it's catered towards machine vision and vision sensors, um, but also I've seen a lot of customers use this in just applications that require very small solution size. Um, so this reference design uses our TPS 23758. Um, it uses it in a primary side regulated topology, which eliminates the optocoupler and kind of all that feedback network, uh, really enabling a small solution size. Um, in addition, the, the TPS 23758 has a feature called spread spectrum frequency dithering <laughs> or SSFD. Um, which enables the dithering of the switching frequency to, to reduce uh, EMIs or, or enable easy class B EMI compliance. Um, so this is a really great reference design for five volt systems up to 92% efficient and, and better than plus or minus 2% accuracy and a really small form factor. Um, so this is a design um, that I recommend for, for any, anybody who's designing applications requiring small solution size and kind of the 13 watt, 13 watt space. All right, so I wanted to wrap up um, by giving you guys some resources so that you can go ahead and kind of get started with learning more about PoE. Um, we, you know, I, I recently spent a bunch of time with my team creating a, you know, a PoE training portal um, that basically highlights like what is PoE, what are, you know, what does the handshake look like, uh, basically educating folks on some of the power basics um, and some of the operation considerations. So these are really short videos, about five minutes or less. Um, just to try to educate folks on, on, on PoE as a technology. So if you're interested in learning more about some kind of PoE basics, um, I, I recommend you go to ti.com backslash PoE, um, and you can check out our, our PoE training series and walk through our videos here. Um, in addition, uh, you could order, you know, any of the, the reference designs that I talked about today. Um, uh, otherwise, if you're just looking for some general, you know, evaluation hardware, uh, maybe some lower cost hardware just to kind of learn about, you know, the technology and, and just start plugging and playing. Um, here's some kind of general reference designs that I would recommend um, taking a look at. And that's all I had on my side. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and 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 type them up and ask them uh, while the perv is presenting. Um, feel free to send those those questions in and, and we'll take a look and I'll be prepared to comment um, at the end. Thank you all. Here we go. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Apurva, and I'm a product definition engineer at Worth Electronics. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Brett for giving such a good overview of PoE as a technology. And as we saw, that land transformer is a critical part of PoE design, and Worth Electronics being one of the leading manufacturers of passive magnetics. I would like to take this opportunity to talk about land transformers in little more detail. Under this topic, uh, we'll be covering the following points today, starting with purpose of land transformer in PoE. Then we'll go through different types of land transformers, such as discrete and integrated. Moving on to the parameters to look out for when we are selecting this transformer. After this, we'll briefly go through a couple of extensions and new topics in the land technology, such as HPLE, which stands for High Performance Low EMI LAN, and SPE, which is Single Pair Ethernet. And lastly, we'll conclude by discussing few circuit considerations and measurement techniques. And I'll also demonstrate a very easy online selection tool that is available on our website. Uh, let's get started with the purpose that a land transformer has to serve in a PoE type of application. Firstly, it is to provide electrical isolation for safety reasons. Now, when an Ethernet cable is laid, it's often parallel to the high voltage cable as well as many other signal cables. Now, this could potentially cause very harmful and disruptive disturbances. Therefore, we need protection against the high voltages, and LAN transformer helps us to achieve exactly that. Typically, the standard voltage level goes up to 1.5 kilovolts, but for certain medical and industrial applications, the voltage can go up to 4 kilovolts or in some cases even as high as 6 kilovolts. Now, a LAN transformer is expected to reduce the electric shock to the end user by providing isolation between the primary and secondary side. Next reason to use a LAN transformer is to help us with impedance matching. Now, this ensures that the output of the transformer has the same impedance as that of the connecting cable in order to maximize the bandwidth. And lastly, a LAN transformer provides EMI separation. 
Now, most slime transformers come with an inbuilt common mode choke, and this choke helps us to reduce the undesired and unwanted noise. Okay, now let's take a look at the position of LAN transformer in a typical circuit. Now, normally we start with, with the IC. It could be something from TI, which Brett mentioned uh, in the previous part of the presentation. And then we have the LAN transformer, which comes in between the IC and the cable. Now, under the scenario, the IC here is helping us with the digital signal, which is filled, which is filled with like, a lot of information and data. Then LAN transformer is actually taking all that signal and passing it on to a connector. And in between, the LAN transformer is helping us to isolate that, uh, that transfer. And this kind of a separation is also referred to as galvanic separation, which is to make sure that the board is not directly in contact with the end cable. Now, when the LAN transformer takes the signal from IC, it gives it to RJ45 connector. And this type of transfer, it is sometimes referred to as magnetic coupling. And this RJ45 is then uh, eventually in contact with the end cable. Now, this is how the whole picture of the setup would look like from the power source device, PSE, to the end device, which is the PD powered device. Now, we have one pair of transformer and connector on the PSE side. And through the cable, it is connected to another pair of transformer and connector on the PD side. Now, uh, in order to get power to the device, we first need to generate this power at the sending side of communication. Now, as we need certain voltage and current uh, to be supplied to our receiver, the sending device has to generate this power and transfer it to the connector. Now, on the PSC side, the power is getting transferred to LAN transformer, which gets passed to connector. And inside this connector, the electrical power gets mixed with the data signal, and together it moves to the cable. At the receiver side, we now need to separate the data signal and power. Data signal very easily moves to the LAN transformer, whereas power gets separated and is transferred to the power supply section of this device. A small point to note here is that the, the flow of power or the transfer of data is always one way and it only goes through PSC to cable and to PV. Now in general, there are two types of LAN transformers that are used in PoE kind of applications, uh, discrete and integrated. We'll start by talking about discrete first. As you can see on the left side of the screen here, uh, a LAN is basically a small black box with multiple pins or legs on it. Taking a closer look at the schematic shows that it is made up of two essential components. One is the common mode choke, and second is matching or isolation transformer. One pair of transformer and choke is present on the transmitting end and another on the receiving end. As we saw in the previous slide, the transformer here is providing us with galvanic separation, and common mode choke is helping us to reduce EMI. Now, the number of pairs of transformer and choke that we need entirely depends on the speed that we are trying to achieve. For example, the left circuit here is for 100 megabits. And in this case, we need two pairs of transformer and choke. Whereas on the right side, the circuit is a little more complicated because we want to achieve one gigabit. And therefore, we'll need four pairs of transformers and choke. Now, this slide will show you the structural differences between different values. For example, let's say uh, we are considering 1,000 base T which will have little more pairs and it will take up little more space compared to something like 100 base T, which only has two pairs of transformer and choke. Increasing the speed furthermore, let's say for 10 G base T, the number of pairs are going to increase, the package of the LAN transformer will be bigger and it will take up more space on the board. Moving on to next type of LAN magnetics, uh, the integrated LAN. Now, the configuration of integrated LAN is, I would say, 80% similar to the discrete one uh, with a common mode choke and isolation transformer. But in addition to these two components, integrated LAN also has something called a box bit termination. Now, this termination is a resistor network containing 75 ohm resistors on each twisted pair, and this connection goes to ground through a 1,000 picofarad cap. 
Now, the result of this additional setup is just to provide us with extra EMI separation. Further elements that we can add to an integrated LAN could include something like a triple winded common mode choke and two common mode choke on one core, which is also referred to as an auto transformer. The reason that these elements are part of some circuits and not present in some other, it entirely depends on what kind of inner wiring you have from the plug to the customer's application. Now, when we have too many lines and uh, too many plug points and there is like a lot of crossing, there is some loss of performance. Now, to compensate for this loss, these type of additional elements are needed. Within RJ45 as well, we have different type of structural differences based on what is the mounting type or if they have built in LEDs or not. I mean, in this slide, we'll go through a few of those examples. Let's say this is an RJ45 with a through hole kind of construction, which has small legs at the bottom of it to help us with, with soldering on the board versus something like an SMD, which is much more flatter, and we just need to like solder and paste it on the board through reflow or some other kind of technique. Then another type is tab up, which could have few LEDs and built in it, tab down with no LEDs, entirely depending on what application you are trying to put it in and how much space the board is allowing. Next would be a simple RJ45 with no EMI fingers. And lastly, something which has like a very tiny extension to the board, uh, sorry, to the LAN, which is called EMI fingers. And benefit of having EMI fingers, or in some cases, it is also referred to as TAS, is to ensure a good high frequency short circuit between this connector and the panel where it is getting placed. At high frequencies, it's just not enough to have just one ground connection. The more connections we have, the better performance we get. And that is where EMI fingers, a very small addition to the LAN transformer, can help achieve that. Now, these are a few more examples of how the final product of RJ45 looks like. Uh, different parts, they have different external structure based on the power level that, that they are achieving. Like the ones on the left side, which are relatively smaller, and they don't have any inbuilt LEDs, and they are specifically for 30 watts or 60 watts of power versus something like this which is very huge because it has usb ports inbuilt in it it has leds inbuilt, inbuilt in it so depending on what type of selection you are making how many integrated component it has the external structure of each and every rg45 is going to change now talking a little bit about the electrical specs of a LAN transformer the equivalent circuit is fairly simple with a few basic passive components combined together. Like here we can see in the circuit, uh, the leakage inductance, winding resistance, and distributed cap, they are present on both primary and secondary side of the circuit, whereas magnetizing inductance and core loss resistance are present on the primary side. And lastly, there is a winding capacitance, which is connecting the two primary and the secondary winding with, for us. Now, based on this circuit, we can define the parameters that are important when we are selecting a LAN transformer. Now, here you can see a sample data sheet with all the parameters listed and all the values uh, given, for example. Now, we will go through each and every parameter and see what it means exactly. Starting with auto MDIX. Auto MDIX is basically the property of switching in between channels. Now, normally the twisted pair boards uh, must be connected so that the transmitting pair on one end is connected to the receiving pair on the other and vice versa. Now switching in between these two different channels or how many channels we need entirely depends on the second property which is speed. Like let's say for 1000 megabits per second we might just require two channels but if we increase the speed to 10, G per, uh, 10 gigabits per second then we might require four or even six channels in some cases. And auto MDX will define the capability of how we switch in between those channels. Next parameter to consider is open circuit inductance. Now, this is the inductance which is measured when the transformer has no load connected to it. Defined by IEEE standards, it must be a minimum of 350 microhenry for something like 1000 base T or 10G base T type of application. 
next parameter to look for is the insertion loss. Now, when we put a transformer in between the source and the load, some power gets lost through the transformer winding and its core. Insertion loss helps us to calculate uh, how much exact signal is actually passing through the transformer and going to the load. So it will give us the value of what is the final, final, final measured signal that we get on the load. Whereas return loss is slightly opposite of insertion. Now this will compare the measured impedance and the standard impedance. And based on the difference, it will give us the value of the signal which is getting reflected back to the source. So insertion loss, we calculated at the end of the end of the load, and return loss, we see whatever signal is coming back to the source. Next property is differential to common mode rejection ratio, DCMR. This is a measure of how much of a differential signal can we convert into common mode signal. This we do because it is much easier to get rid of common mode signal simply by using a common mode choke. That is why we need to convert the differential signal into common mode first. And following that, we have a property named as common mode rejection ratio, which will help us to reduce the ultimate common mode noise or common mode signal that we have simply by using a common mode choke. Lastly, the property to look for is crosstalk which is the amount of energy that is coupled on a signal path from another nearby signal. For example, if we have two signal paths which are very, very close to each other, it's very likely that we'll see interferences of signal in between these two paths. And crosstalk simply gives us the measure of that. A couple of extensions to the topic of LAN uh, these days, starting with HPLE, which stands for High Performance Low EMI. Now we know that we require to have a common mode choke in a LAN transformer for noise reduction, but the initial standards only cover frequencies up to 100 megahertz. However, these days we see applications which go in gigabit range and uh, they are expected to have very, very low noise limits. And in this case, now we have started to see a little bit of issues in performance when it comes to higher frequencies. A simple solution for these kinds of problems is to add two common mode chokes on the physical logic unit, which will increase the common mode rejection ratio. Now, this increases the attenuation in the frequency range from 80 megahertz going up to as high as 500 megahertz. So, like with comparison to initial standards, we are jumping literally five times just by adding two more common mode chokes. So this is the circuit where we can see the difference between standard LAN versus the ones which have HPLE. Here we just have a regular pair of transformer and choke, whereas on the right side we have two additional common mode chokes who are helping us to increase the common mode impedance and eventually helping to reduce noise up until 500 megahertz. Now, a new market in the world of Ethernet right now is for single pair Ethernet. In certain applications like CC Link or Modbus, the length of the Ethernet is just not long enough. Uh, we have a capability only till 100 meters. Now, traditionally, we have seen that the Ethernet connections, they have either two or four pairs. SPE will help us reduce them down to just one single pair. And this will help ultimately in reducing the space and enables us to have a comprehensive and standardized communication between many separate devices. It also lengthens the distance between these components to 1,000 meters. And that is why this looks like it will be a key technology when it comes to applications like 4.0 and IoT, where the end devices are separated by longer distances. And finally, this slide shows a little bit of how the measurements are done and what are the key points when we look for when we are selecting a LAN. Uh, for example, this is giving us a comparison between when we put current into one channel versus what happens when we put current into two. Definitely, the power that we get at the end will increase when we are putting the current through two, two channels. But a key point to note here is that let's say we put 0.6 amps, and based on that, we are getting out more power. And the heating of the transformer coil is at 8.7 degrees C. Versus when we increase the current to 1.2 amps, the heating now goes as high as 35 degrees C for the same test duration. 
So even though while selecting a transformer, you might think that, okay, it is able to take the current, definitely it will. But at the same time, we need to make sure that we are not heating up the transformer beyond its limit. Now, taking into account all these parameters and measurement setup, uh, we have developed a very easy online tool that is available on our website called Red Export. And it can help you with better selection, with better understanding of the product. So now you can either you can just like follow the link which will be available later in the presentation, or you can simply type in uh, Red Export on Google and it will direct you to the home page of Red Export. So now we'll just like have a quick demonstration of the tool. And that would be the last section of, of this presentation. So like I said, you can either just go and type in Red Export and it will direct you to the home page of this tool. Okay, so this is the home screen and our search engine is basically divided widely into products and applications. So if you already know what is the end application that uh, that you are targeting, you can just select a few basic applications here and this will help you guide in better selecting of the passive components. But for today's uh, demonstration, we'll directly go to products as we know our focus products for the day. And let's say we are trying to select RJ45 LAN transformer. So now under RJ45 LAN transformer, Red Export will show you all the all the RJ45s that we have in our product catalog, which are available on the website. If you can see on the top right side here, we have 154 selections which is way too high and we need help in narrowing down to the best possible part that we need. So there are like several different tabs which can help us uh, narrow down the selection to the exact one part, one part. For example, let's say we know the speed that we want to operate at, let's say it is 1000 Mbps. So now it will reduce the selection to from 154 to 103. Then we can also select it based on the application that we are targeting. For example, let's say we want it to run in the POE. Okay. Now we just have 22 items left to compare. Further, you can also sort down the selection based on the mounting type, whether you need a uh, through hole or SMT, uh, whether if it's tap down or tap up or vertical, depending on uh, how, are, how are you planning to insert it on the board, as well as what color of LEDs do you need. So basically you can narrow it down on several factors. After we have like a certain amount of number which we just want to compare with, we can just select any number of parts and it will get added to, to the tab here. So there is no limit of numbers that you can add. You can add endless numbers and compare it based on schematic, magnetical dimensions, or the solder pad details. And just keep switching in between and you'll see data for each and every part. Now, if you need even more technical details, the spec sheet is already attached here. You can just click on the PDF and it will take you to the data sheet, which is more detailed. And you can look through the schematic and the electrical values. And even after that, if you need any kind of technical assistance or if you need samples, uh, for samples, it is pretty easy You just add it to the card. Uh, but if you have any more technical questions, you can just go here. If you know the email address for from Word, you can just send us the question, send us the query, or just ask it to any of the representatives of Word who are also available on the social media platforms like LinkedIn and Twitter. And similar thing is for uh, discrete signal transformers. We have a, a separate tab for that. But it is pretty much the same. The selection, the selection tabs are pretty much the same based on speed or uh, based on the application, whether you have HPLE extension features or not. So you can again simply simply play with the tool and uh, see all these details and help share it with us or share it with the team and just look through it. Thank you so much.